Hey, welcome to Chocolate City Tech. This is Derek. Uh, today, we're going to continue on our lesson with uh, Git and source control. In the last episode, we stopped right after downloading uh, Node. So we're going to start, we're going to kick off from that point and keep moving. So I want to make sure that, make sure that you actually do have Node.js installed. Um, if not, I'll mention it again later as we proceed through the rest of the lessons. All right, so what are we going to do today? Uh, we got a series of items that we're going to cover. As I mentioned, part one is going to be mostly setting up the environment. So the first we want to do is we want to go ahead and download Git. So what we want to do is we want to download Git. So head on to this uh, site in the URL. Um, if you are on Linux, just follow this instruction here. Um, if you're on Mac OS, you, may, you probably might have um, Git installed already. If not, just follow the instruction. It's pretty simple. If you have Windows, um, all you need to do is just download Git here as well. Uh, if you have Chocolate installed, you can do you can do sort of package uh, installation as well, almost like you're on uh, Linux or something. But otherwise, just download it from here. Should be good to go. Uh, with that install, be ready to get it going. All right. So with your Git downloaded, let's go and uh, set a few configs before we start working with Git. All right, so what I want you to do is bring up your terminal. If you are on Windows, what happened when you downloaded Git was that it installed something called Git Bash, and that's what you're going to be using. This offers a lot of our Unix type uh, commands uh, that you normally don't have with uh, the normal Windows uh, command prompt. Uh, what I have here is a, um, a new version of Windows Terminal. Uh, it's a little different, but you can use the Git Bash. In fact, you do want to use a Git Bash because most likely you don't have this installed. If you're on Mac OS, then obviously use your normal terminal. If, if you're on Linux, that same thing as well. And you should be good to go. Uh, regardless of which one you're using for what we're going to do here, it will not matter. So what we want to do is we want to first check, make sure that we actually do have Git installed. And by simply typing Git, you should know that, um, you know, we're going to get access here. Let us, these commands show up, letting us know that we do indeed have Git. All right, so we, we've already covered that part. So uh, what's next? Uh, so I mentioned what we're going to do is we're going to set a few uh, configs. Uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for us as we work along. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell Git uh, that we have a uh, what to use as our username. And what we do here is I'll give you a few commands here. Um, So our first command is going to be uh, telling Git or globally telling Git what our uh, username should be. And what you want to do is just simply git config uh, dash dash global with a global switch and tell the user that name. I'm not going to do that because I already have it installed here and already have my username uh, there as well. Uh, you can also set your email as well. You can set a lot of uh, different commands and uh, in the description, I'm going to point you to a spot where you can get a lot of uh, commands that you can set, but this should sort of get us going. Uh, one other item that I probably want to set as well uh, for my local config is going to be, um, so we did the username, we did the email and for you, if you want to use a different editor than what your uh, Git already comes with, you can set the editor here by simply passing in the editor. Um, actually, I believe it's core dot editor, not just editor, and then tell it which one, you, what editor you want to use. For Windows, it comes with a Git Bash, which I believe the default for that is Nano. Um, if you want to use something else like uh, Emacs or something like, that, you just pass it Emacs, and um, you know it's gonna default to that as your uh, one to use. For me, I think I use Nano by default, so I'm just gonna keep that and just keep it moving all right so we've got those configs set up so we're going to move on to the next item to cover which is going to be so the next thing we're going to cover is going to be signing up for a git provider now it is possible for you to host your own git but chances are if you're watching this that's not something you're looking to do right now um so there are several git providers there's um azure there's um at last git bitbucket um, by Atlassian, I believe. Uh, there's also uh, GitLab and so on and so forth. For our 
for our for this series and for a lot of people in general, uh, GitHub has become the the de, de facto essentially. So that's what we're going to be using as well. So what we're going to do is we want to go up and go ahead and sign up for GitHub. So get to your favorite browser, tap in github.com and you should be able to get here. Uh, all you want to do is go ahead and sign up. Obviously, I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's pretty simple. Just, you know, put in your information, sign up and we can get moving. All right. So once you sign up, it's probably going to bring you to this uh, dashboard. Um, in this case, all we want to do is we want to first create a repository. So click on the new button. You're going to arrive here, and as you can see, um, Chocolate City Tech, that's me. Your name is obviously going to be different. So to get started, we're actually going to just play around with our two um, test repos. We will delete them, and then we'll actually do the real one that we want to uh, work with. All right, so go ahead and type it in. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to call it test one, not two. Test one is going to be good enough. So as you can see on the bottom here, it gives you an option to make it a public or private. For our purpose, we can just leave it public because we actually just going to delete it right away. Um, if we can add a few items here, we're not going to. Um, you can add a readme. Readme, what it does, it that's the mention here. It, it, this is where you write a long description of your project. So I guess before I even go far too far, let me describe to you what's really happening here. So in GitHub on in um in GitHub's case, right? What you can do is you can create a project. We didn't do that. We went straight to a repository, and that's fine. You can create a repository. A repository is going to hold, uh, as it says, contains all your project files, including your version um, revision history. Repositories can have any number of um, branches. Now we haven't created a branch yet. But what's going to happen is as soon as we click create repository, Git is going to go right ahead and it's going to actually automatically create a um, repository for us. So the repository that is going to create for us is called test one. And what it does is it automatically creates a, an initial um, branch. In this case, the branch that it created is uh, it's going to be called main. Now you can actually change the configuration for this. You can tell it give it a different name so that whenever it creates uh, a new repo for you, it gives it a, a name that you actually want, All right? Um, so what we're going to do is, what we really need here is just the URL to our Git. So just copy that, and you're going to go to our terminal. So back in our terminal here, let's clear this out. And what we're going to do is we we can, we're going to clone, we're going to do two things, right? We're going to, I'm going to show you two different ways in which you can bring the repository to your, um, to your local machine, essentially. Because what we, what we did was we created one on the remote server. What we want to do now is bring it to our local machine. So what we can do is we can create a brand new um, repository locally and then sync it up with the one that we just created on the, on the web. So to do that, let's just go ahead and create a new um, folder just to play around with. So here I'll make a directory. I'm, I'm going to call it test one. Now keep in mind the name I'm giving it doesn't have to be the same as the name that I gave on the um, remote server. I'm just doing that because it's just going to make my life that much easier. But in fact, you know what? Just to let you know that it won't make a difference, I'll call this test one way something, right? And let's see into that. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend as if we already had a work locally, right? And now we want to be able to sync it up with the, uh, the new repository that was created. To do that, what we do is we, we uh, issue a git command called git init. And as you see, it says it initialized a new git repository. So if we do git, see that is telling us that we are in a master uh, branch. Uh, now, Locally, we haven't told Git that whenever it creates something brand new, we should call it uh, main. So it's defaulting to one of the older ways of creating Git, which was just or renaming it, uh, naming it master. Uh, for our purpose right now, it doesn't matter. We actually will tell it to switch that in a few minutes. Um, but for now, let's just keep with this. So what we're going to do is we just initialize this. Let's add a file. Um, so let's actually, you know what? 
I cannot do a uh, touch in this because I don't think they support touch yet. Actually, let me see. Maybe they do support touch. Uh, touch and some file dot txt. Ah, they do not support touch. So I guess I probably won't be using this then. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll still use it. Let me just go to a. Instead, what I'll do is I'll bring up. I'm actually not going to go back to the terminal because Visual Studio Code has a what we call an integrated terminal. Uh, so for now, I think that's probably going to be good enough uh, for what we're doing here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do get um, status. And this is not really writing get status. This is a shorthand, uh, short command alias that I'll show you later on. So you can, in fact, let me not do that right now. Let me disregard that I did get st. Right. So it tells us that we just added, uh, we have a get sum dot txt. And what we want to do is in order for us to um, bring down, uh, sync this up, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add this, get add, we're going to add everything else. Nope. Give me space. All right, that's, that added all the um, files there, and I'll explain that in a minute. You can disregard that for now. I just want to show you the quickest way, one of the ways in which you add a, uh, we, we sync our repository with a, with um, the remote, that one that we created. So if we come back here, we'll see that it tells us if we wanted to sync up, all we have to do really is initialize it, um, tell Git on what branch we are on, right? So let me actually reduce this because as you can see here, right? It, let me clear this. Uh, it defaults to master. So what we want to do is we actually want to tell what we, um, that it's not really that. So we're going to switch it out. Um, I believe we already get status tells us what's added. You want to commit. added some text okay. tell get that this is really main and not master and then last what we do is we're going to bring in uh tell get about our remote so we're going to say get remote add origin as you can see here and then we're going to bring in our origin which in this case is that now, if this is your very first time doing this, most likely you're going to get um, a prompt to put in your username and password. So if you do get that, just go ahead and add those. In this case, now that we add it, what we're going to do is do now issue git push. Um, just copy that. And what that's going to do is it's going to sync up your local with your remote when you do um, set upstream origin. Of course, it doesn't know that, right? It seems like it didn't actually copy. Um, keep forgetting that this this actually isn't. So issue git push. I'm used to working on terminals where doing that would have just copied, and I want. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and push, and as you can see now, it's pushing. All right, so. If you come back on a browser, we uh, go ahead and refresh and that might be a little too big. So let me refresh. And as you can see, we added, get this here, All right? So we don't need this uh, repository anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the settings. And at the bottom here, we're simply going to say, delete this repo. And yes, I do understand what the ramifications are. So go ahead and delete that. Uh, this time around, call this test two. Again, you can make it public. Go ahead and create it. Uh, you know what we're actually going to do this time around? We're going to actually allow it to add in the Git, uh, the README, 
uh, the ignore file. And let's just say that we're going to be making a uh, node. So app and go ahead and uh, create a repository. We're going to head on back down to our command line. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to get uh, get bash. All right. So this part is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is um, issue one git command, git clone. And just go ahead and paste in the URL that we copied over. And just like before, we can actually give it um, a different name. So we can say that instead of test two, um, I don't know, we'll just call it original or something. And as you can see, it clones into original. We can CD into original. And as you can see, it brought up that. Um, and also, let's see here. That get ignore file and also the readme that we asked, we asked it to um, copy over. All right, so as you can see here, we've um, downloaded Git, we set a config, we sign up with GitHub, we create a repository. We are now going to start working locally with our new repository that we created. We created two test repositories. The first one we created came down to our local and we added it. Um, by adding remote. The second one we created test two, brought it down locally by doing git clone. Um, so now you sort of know that command already. So what we're going to do now is start working with the git repository, that, uh, the real one that we're going to play around with. So, so I already went ahead and deleted the um, test one because I'm, obviously I'm not going to need it. So let's repeat what we did before. We simply issued git clone and we call it node api once again you can issue a um, a name for the folder i'm going to keep it the same and just call it node api click that and i'm going to cd into our node api and i'm going to open it up please opt it to get a um a get ignore and also a readme git has already done that for us which is pretty cool so let's move on with the rest of the um items all right so what are we building we're going to build a really simple node api it's just going to be maybe a person's list or something like that honestly it doesn't really matter it can be anything it can be products whatever uh the, that's not really the the aim of what we're doing here is to you know learn a lot of get commands quickly and uh, be productive in a short amount of time so with that said um if you didn't already download Node.js, just go ahead and grab it from this uh, site, nodejs.org, get the LTS version. And let me actually switch it over to using git bash. So the next one that I open up, it's gonna be git bash. Uh, once you come back to your terminal, if you do the node B, it's gonna tell me that I'm currently on 4.12.18. Uh, so if you're getting the latest, um, Node.js should be good to go. Uh, so with that being said, let's bring this down a little bit. Let me maybe reduce this because I think it might be too big for you. Um, so uh, let's get going. So what are you going to build? Simple Node API. So the first thing we want to do is we want to also create, make this a Node. Um, obviously, this is not a Node uh, tutorial, but let's go ahead and just create a Node project by simply doing um, npm init and just take the default so just you know just wrote y to get the default that's all we really need uh next thing we want to do is we want to get express js so we'll just do npm and you want to do npm not mp right npm i uh express that was pretty quick we now have express uh, loaded up Let's go ahead and create a index.jx. That's all we need. Or server.jx. Doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal what you're going to write. All right. So let's get up and running quickly with git and part one of this. So first command that we learned was git clone. And we saw what that did. And before I even proceed, let me uh, show you something here. Git and dash dash help or even done not even that just type in git 
So what you're going to find is that with most things, command line, there's always going to be a way for you to get help. Um, and simply by just typing in whatever it is that you're working on, you can simply get help. One of the things that I want to stress is that you don't have to know every single thing, right? So when you get started, you might get a little overwhelmed because it seems like there's a whole lot of things to learn. Uh, but really, there's a lot of help out there. By simply typing get, most of the commands that you see here are what you're going to deal with on a daily basis. Uh, and really nothing more than that. So with that being said, let's get going. So you clear this terminal. So the first thing that we did was get clone. So that's your first command, right? So what does that do? That simply grabs the remote um, server and brings it down locally for you. Um, the next item is get status. What does that do? That tells us what is happening with the uh, current branch that we are on. So in this case, it tells us we are on branch main. It tells us that we have a few items that have not yet been um, staged, right? So typically your well, not typically, your Git files are either going to be tracked or on track, right? So that those are the two states they're going to be in. Right now, it is on track, meaning it has not been staged and has not been prepared to go up to the server yet or the remote server yet. So how do we get that? How do we solve that? So first thing we can do is we can do Git add. What does that do? That's going to stage this for us, right? So we can pass it individually the files that we want. In this case, I want to pass it get dot index dot JS, or I can just give it a dot and tell it I want everything in this folder and be, uh, below or this folder and all the descendants of this folder. Since I want to add all of it, I'll just simply do get at all. So now we can do get status again. Now you notice that it's a little different, right? Previously, it was showing this as being in red and it was telling us it was on track. Now it tells us that we do have some items. However, they have not been committed, right? So they have not been committed yet. They are staged, but I haven't told the system that these are ready to go yet, essentially, right? Um, as of this point, if I stop or even if I push, this stuff would not go up and there would be no change in my revision because they have not actually been committed. So to do that, we simply say git commit. Now, when you do git commit, you have an option to pass it a uh, M flag. And what that would do is it allows you to write a, for the most part, a pretty short um, description about what it is that you did. If you wanted to write more, if you wanted a, um, some additional stuff to write, just leave it this way, do git commit, and then that's gonna open up a brand new uh, editor for you. Um, in the beginning, I think we set the default editor to be, for me, my default editor is nano. If your default editor is something else, that's what's going to open up for you to make your edits. I'm not going to uh, let it open up. I'm just going to give it what I did. Typically what you want to do is this is supposed to be helpful so that whoever comes on, when they look at your, ver your revision, um, when they look at your commit, they can tell what's happening. So your commit message should be something useful. So in this case, what do we do? We added, uh, we added express, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so now we've added, we've committed. So let's try get status again. Now it's telling us that we now have the information here that is, uh, needs to be pushed. So it says that your branch is ahead of main by at least one commit. So when it looks at the information and the, uh, when Git looks at the information that it has on our remote server, it can tell that we have more information here, specifically one more commit than the um, remote server. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, issue in the next command Git push. And because you're already in this um, file and we've already brought it down, we can just do it. We don't have to tell it, get pushed to origin main. Um, it knows where we are, so we can just set it. And now when we do get status, there is nothing to commit. Simple as that. These commands are probably the ones that you deal with the most. Now, the next one I wanna show you is get pull. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to go up to um, the remote server and it's going to see if there are any changes made. And based on that, it's going to pull in new information. Now, if, if changes up top, and by top, I mean changes in your remote server are somehow different from the change that you have locally, then you can potentially have what we call a conf conflict. And in that case, Git will not automatically pull it down for you. It will want you to manually uh, fix those conflicts and before you pull it down. All right. So we got that. The other thing that you can do is you can also issue a command and git fetch. Now, what this will do is it will go up to the server once again, pull the information down, but it will not attempt to um, mix it with what you have locally. So you can see what the changes are actually are before you ever even do anything else. All right, so those covers a lot of the basics that you're going to be dealing with. And by basic, I mean, once again, this is the majority of the stuff that you're going to be doing. All right. So let's go ahead and play a little more um, and create our little node server application. Again, the, what we're building is, isn't really that important. We just want to be able to do more so that we can play around some more. All right. All right so what I did was pretty simple. I brought in um, Express, which is the Node.js, probably the most popular Node.js um, ser server out there, uh, framework. Uh, brought in Express, uh, created a port that it want Express to listen to, and I'm just gonna bind a, a simple uh, HTML file to it so we can play around. Uh, so right now that folder is not created, so I can go ahead and create that folder. So let's go ahead and create a folder, call it um, public, obviously. So with the public file created, what I'm going to do is, uh, excuse me, the public folder created, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a file, call this index.html, make it HTML5, we'll call it users best app, sure. Uh, make it a div here, call it something here, save that, go ahead and run. And what you notice here is um, we have the node server, run ng, uh, node index.jx. And as you can see here, that's going to bring up the public folder. And in the public folder, it's going to default to an index file. So let's do npm run dev. And when we do npm run dev, let's bring up our and there you go, something here. Perfect. Right. Let's kill the server by control um, C. Well, I guess if you're on Mac, when the uh, command C. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and add that. Git add. Git status. There you go. All right. So it says that we can add and we can commit. So git commit add it index HTML and we also added a express server let's do status again and there is nothing to commit we can now push up At this point, you pretty much know how to do git push, so you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and make a change there. Save, player, give you a little more space. Let me actually give you more room here so you can, so you can see more of this. By room, I mean more, uh, make it a little bit larger. So we do get status. You can tell us that we made a change. We knew that already, right? So what do we do? Get add. Now, you don't have to do get add all the time um, and then commit. You can actually shortcut this by just simply doing git add commit and then some message. So in this case, what's our message going to be? Uh, we are, you modified, we made changes to index file. And let's do get status again. And it says that everything is good to go. Let's go ahead and push that. All right, now we are told that that was a mistake. It was supposed to really be here. All right, sweet. 
no problem. So what do we do? We do check if it modify. And here I want to show you something else. Um, so if I do get add, it's now moved from the being on track to not being tracked. It's not been. Uh, but what if we actually made a mistake? We really actually didn't want it. So what we can do is we can remove that. So get not remove. Uh, it's called cached. And what do we remove? We're going to remove what we just added, which is the public index. Yeah, of course, that's what I meant. What else do you think I meant? All right. So now we do get status. And we can see that um, nothing else, you know, everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and do get add again. status and it's been modifying and I'm going to go ahead and push that and I'll show you the next command everything's up to date wait what of course why because we never actually committed that right so let's go ahead and commit get commit once again message me changes to index here all right do not a status. Of course, it doesn't know what that is because I never get get. All right. Uh, get push. All right. All right. So let's back to our um, what we we're actually supposed to be doing here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a, a simple API. Uh, so let's go and grab some JSON that we can play around with. All right, so what I have here is a uh, JSON generator. Just go ahead and go to that website, json-generator.com. Um, it defaults to user type, and I've selected um, a few here. I don't, doesn't really matter. You can pick in whatever you want. Just go ahead and generate, copy it, make a little file here, call it a users.json. Paste that in there. Get back to your server. So now instead of this, we can use users. And there you go. Actually, I don't like the fact that I'm going, I have both running the same. So what I'm gonna do is gonna change that. Kill my server, make it API slash users. That's much better. Obviously that's not gonna change much. That's just gonna do much of the same thing that we had before. But I think that's actually a little better. So API slash users, there we go. Uh, if yours doesn't look like this, it's maybe because you don't have this um, extension install that makes it pretty but regardless it doesn't really matter so as you can see here we can hit our api look at that we got api going that's why people love node so much you can get things going pretty fast but things can get hairy when you have a lot of stuff happening so anyway back to our app let's see what else we need to do kill the server so the next command i want to show you is sort of how to be able to tell what's happening with your current um environment so let me clear space here get status we know that we added stuff to not just the index file but also we added a brand new uh, file as well so here let's do get diff and what that's going to do is it's essentially going to in fact let me bring up um the other terminal just so we can have a little more space so bring up get bash Clear that, and clear doesn't have a T in it. Perfect. So get diff. Right. So what this is doing now is it's telling us um, basically all the changes that were made. All right. So that concludes um, the lesson for today. I think at this point you pretty much have most of the stuff that you need to get going up, running quickly with Git. Um, Git commands, Git clone. 
as I mentioned, a lot of these commands are basic, but they cover the majority of things that you're going to ever do when it comes to uh, working uh, in a team, really. So your Git clone gets you your local repository. The reality is if you're working on a big project, you may do this like maybe once, um, or actually you're going to do just once unless you just have another um, computer or something like that, another machine. But generally that's going to get you covered. Um, Git pull, push. Um, we're going to, in the next episode, we're going to cover more of the Git flow. So we're going to deal with um, doing pull requests and stuff like that. As always, if you find this sort of information helpful, if you find this sort of content helpful, go ahead and subscribe, hit the notif notification. I have a few social media items on the bottom. Click one of those, see what's happening. I'll catch you in the next episode. All right.